Okay, so you guys all have the exercise 220 handout. Um, you will end up with a lot of extra time today to continue working on your model, right? I've given you this time so that next class, when you come in, it should be pretty much ready to go and we can start actually getting some final renderings out. Um, so we're going to concentrate on the rendering, setting up the camera views. We're going to do the exterior daytime rendering um, on, on Wednesday. So the more ready you are, the better your renders are going to be. That doesn't mean that your render that you do on Wednesday has to be your final render. You can, of course, re-render it, but I want you to start being ready for that. Uh, so we'll deal with the, um, the sun and the sky and all that system and make sure that that works. We'll make sure the materials are well. We'll get the camera angle set up correctly. We'll add a little bit of extra eye candy um, and then do a nice quality rendering on Wednesday. So today, it's about really integrating your building with the site. And thus far, a lot of you, from what I've seen, are designing your building on a flat ground, and you're kind of anticipating what the topography would look like, but it's not really stuck into a particular place in the topography yet. And so we want to get it stuck into the topography and make sure that it's, it's reading and looking, looking really nice. Um, so if you don't already have it, you should download the site information. You probably have already picked whether you're doing the coast or whether you're doing the um, the mountains, you should be picking one or the other of those, and you can download them from the Exercise 220 page. I relinked them uh, there as well. So I already have um, it on my flash drive, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Rhino, and as part of the, the learning process, right, of course I gave you the SketchUp file, not the Rhino file of the terrain, so I'm going to quickly make it into a nice NURB surface that I can work with. Um, and so I have a brand new Rhino file. I want to make sure that my units are correct in inches, which they are perfect. And I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to bring in that SketchUp file. And I know you all know how to do this, but it can't hurt to, to double check if I can find SketchUp. There it is. And I think it's Site 1. No, oh, site two, sorry. Let me get rid of this. Site two. There we go. All right. So I end up with the, um, sorry, I got to switch mice because this one is going to kill me. The right click is way too sensitive. All right. So I have the surface that's been brought in. This is the SketchUp surface. I'll go ahead and switch to shaded mode so that we can see it. And I can get rid of this so that we can see um, that little piece. I'm going to ultimately put my building right here or right here um, on one of those two little peninsulas. But I want to make this into a NURB surface first. So I'm going to do that uh, contour. And let's go ahead and get rid of some of these extra layers here. All right, so we'll call this contours. And I'm going to contour the surface in two directions. Let me turn on my vertex snap. I'm going to go in that way. And we'll do it at 100 feet. Nope, we'll do it at 50 feet. go. Same thing, going this way. Feet. Perfect. We can go ahead and turn off the Google Earth layers here. End up with that. Now I need to clean up the edges, or um, I can draw a line that goes along the edges. Uh, either way will work fine. I'm going to clean it up by going into the top view. And we're going to do some trimming here. Take this one. That one. That one. Trim. All right. And then I'll do a curve network. Say 
OK. And so this will build out uh, the curve network for me. And there it is. Uh, remember that when I first create it, it ends up being this really dense grid that's hard to, to work with. So I'm going to rebuild it. So let me select it, rebuild. And I'll do it at 100 by 100, I think. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So now I have that as a terrain. So I'll put it on its own layer called terrain. And then we'll make that active. And let's look at it in the perspective view here. Go. We'll turn off the contours. And now I have that nice piece of NURB surface to work with. Okay. So before I get too far, I'm going to go ahead and organize my layers a little bit. So let's create a, a master layer here. And we'll call this, I don't know, like land. And I'll put this stuff all under the land layer. Uh, I'm going to save the Google terrains in case I end up needing them down the road. Uh, but this is the primary piece that I'm going to work with. Okay, So I know I went through that rather fast, but you guys have done it enough times to where I think you've, you've got it uh, and you'll be able to do it yourselves. Now it's a matter of really figuring out how to place my building onto this site. Okay, So I have open already my building, okay, such as it is. I built it because I was intending to be on the kind of the side of a cliff. I built it in a kind of a stacked manner that I think will fit nicely on the side of the cliff. Um, I did build a little bit of outdoor space. If you haven't built the outdoor space, sometimes it's easier to build it in the uh, site view than it is in this view. Um, but I went ahead and, and did a little bit. I did extend some walls way down because I know it's going to be kind of on the side of a hill. So I need some extra length to those walls. And I also tried to organize my layers such that um, this file is nice and organized, because I'm going to use it as a block. So I have a master layer called Artist Retreat. And then below that, I have interior, I have exterior, I have landscape stuff, which is like the patio and the railings and stuff. And then this is a window that I've used over and over again. Okay? All the materials have been applied, though probably they're missing right now, but we're not going to worry about fancy red rings today anyway, so it doesn't matter at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I save it as its own file. I don't have an infinite plane. I don't have a sun or any kind of lighting. You can have it, but the sun and light won't come through when you, when you bring it in as a block. Um, but the key thing is no infinite plane. Right? All of that's going to be done in the, the final site view. Okay? So I have this saved and ready to use. So I'm going to jump back over to my topography. And I'm going to go ahead and save this before I get too far along here. And we'll save this into my 220 folder. And I'm going to call this assignment 205. Um, and we'll say it's land. And I'll go ahead and save. So now I'm going to go ahead and place in my building. Okay, And I'm going to go ahead, before I get too far, I'm going to create a layer. And we'll call this uh, building. I'm going to make that active. And then I'll go to File and Place. No, oh, excuse me, Edit. I'm File Place. I'm in Illustrator land, sorry, or InDesign. <laughs> uh, I'll go to Blocks, Insert Block Instance. And I'm going to go find my, not the SketchUp file, but the Rhino file. And it's this retreat base. Okay, I'll go ahead and say open. And I want to make sure uh, that once I do this, I'll say OK, that right here I'm saying embed and link. right? So I, I've got both of my options covered. I have it referenced so that I can make sure that it's updated as I make changes. But it's also embedded in the file so that if for some reason I lost the original, it's still there. So that's a good solution. So it's embed and link. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Give it a second. Of course, it's not responding. All right, so then I have my little building that's showing up. And sometimes we need to look at it in the top view to get a better sense for where it's going to go. And it helps sometimes to turn it into a rendered mode so we can kind of see based on the shadows where we might want it to go. 
Okay, so like I said, I'm going to try to nestle it right into one of those little pieces. We can look at it kind of right in there. That's eh, okay. It's not too bad. Okay, I can switch this back into shaded mode if that helps. To me, the um, the rendered mode in the top view for this particular purpose uh, is kind of the easiest way of seeing where it belongs. And then we'll start to look at it in the perspective view. So I'll make this one big. Okay. So as I look at it, it's not too bad, right? And obviously I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage because I have put this in to the site before, so I know it's going to fit. Um, you guys, will, it'll take a little bit more trial and error. But this needs to move around just a little bit to, to really make it work. So let me go ahead and I'm going to move it, and we'll move it back in a bit. Right? I'm looking for a couple key spots. That is a little too high. We need that to go down a little bit. Right. The rest of this looks pretty good. It's exposing that okay. Yeah, so let's move this back just a little bit more. Something like that. No, too far. Yeah, not too bad. That'll probably work. Okay, so it looks like the bottom edge there isn't quite deep enough, right? So I'd go back to my original retreat base. We can take this piece and we can scale 1D. And we can drop that a little bit more. I'll save it. And I'll go back to my Site integration, and we'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. You can just type Block Manager. And it says Linked File is Newer. If I click Update, we can use the existing materials for now. Apply to all. All right. And so now that I've done that, you see that it's now long enough to, to intersect the ground. So if I look at this, I'm not too far away from where I want to be, right? But obviously, I have a bunch of terrain that, that sticks through my building, which I'm not going to want uh, long term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that goes around the footprint of my building, and I'm going to project that line onto the surface so that I can trim out the surface that I don't want. Okay? So it doesn't really matter if that line is flat. It can be going up and down in 3D. Uh, but I want to clean up a few things. I have this little cap that I put on top of the roof there. Uh, I don't want to accidentally snap to that, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Let me look at my layers here a little bit better. Roof cap, we'll turn that off so that I can only snap to the walls themselves. Okay, And then I'll go ahead and look at it in the top view in a wireframe mode. So we can look right down on my building and kind of see where it would go. So now, Right, let me go ahead and move that under that layer. I'm going to go ahead and create on the land layer, I'm going to create just a working. Um, so we'll say this construction just as a layer that I can work on that I can come back and get rid of down the road. Okay, so I'll go ahead and go to the polyline tool. And now I'm going to work my way around the building. All right, so we'll go here. There, there. Go there. There. And back to there. I could type C for close. Okay? And so now I have this little line that goes around my building, I hope. Yes, it does. And if I were to view that in the perspective view, we can see that it's very clearly not a flat line at all. It goes up and down. But it doesn't really matter because it represents the footprint of the building. So I'll go back to the top view. And I'm going to use project. So I'll type project. Or go up to curve, curve from objects project. I think that's where it is, right? Project. 
and I'm going to project it onto the terrain. So I've selected that. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And it's now going to create this really nice clean curve right there that represents my building footprint on the surface of the terrain. So I can actually, at this point, turn off the building altogether, and I'll end up with that nice clean cutout. And so we can go ahead and do a split or a trim, and we can get rid of that center section. Right? So now if I were to turn back on my building, we'd see that my building itself doesn't have that, that piece of land that goes through it anymore. Okay? So it's starting to integrate, it's starting to sit well into the terrain of the building um, itself. Now, if I look over here, right, I built this little retaining wall. And um, let me go ahead and get rid of it. Well, we'll leave those. They're attached. Um, the, the terrain goes way too low in this little wall. I want it to come up to the edge of this wall. So let me continue to work with it. I'm going to build a new little piece of a surface that goes right in here. So let me take a line, and I'll go from this edge of the building, right there, to somewhere over in here along this line, something like that. Okay. I'll take this line in the top view, and I'm going to project it onto the surface itself. And I end up with that little piece of the line. Okay, So I have that line. Let me go ahead and continue with a polyline from that point down to this edge. And then I'll go across from here to right there, and then from here to right there. Okay, So now I end up with those four pieces. Let me make this big. And I'll select each of those. Not that. That curve, that curve that curve, and that curve. So I have those four. Now I can do a curve network. So surface, curve network, and say OK. And I can fill in that little piece of the terrain. Right? I could actually trim off that edge. But because this edge and this edge were derived from that projection line, they're going to match up seamlessly. Okay. So in reality, I probably need to do a little bit more trimming and trim it off, but it'll work for now. Right? So this is starting to, even though these don't look like they're going to integrate, they're going to integrate quite nicely. If I were to switch into rendered mode for a second, we can see that they're going to come together a little bit, a little bit cleaner. Okay? So let me go ahead and turn back to shaded mode. I can turn back on my caps. That are there, and we can start to see that this is now sitting into the, the building site uh, correctly. Now up here, right, I was able to trim that part off, but I have this piece of this hole that's basically going through. So I either need to modify the terrain to come down, or I need to model the mo I need to modify the model to have a retaining wall, or I can let the terrain come down over the top of the roof, depending on what the strategy is, and whether you wanted it to be a green roof or a roof deck or whatever. So for, for lack of something better, I'll go ahead and make a, a retaining wall that would support this. So I'll go ahead and start with just a, a plain box. And actually, let me, I'm going to draw it with a polyline first, so I have a little bit finer control. Uh, and let me turn off my roof caps again. And we'll start right here. And I'll go right there. And let's come down here, maybe to the midpoint of that side, something like that. And let me go ahead and take this, and I'll offset that by maybe one foot. Put that in. And then let's connect these together. Join. And then let me 
me fill it with a radius of zero. I'll make these two go together. Oh, how nice. I have to trim. Sorry. There we go. Let's get rid of this and this. All right. Well, I can use those as my um, backdrop here. So let's see. make sure that it's tall enough to go above whatever that wall would be, something like that. Oh, I didn't put cap on. But you get the idea of how I'm starting to try to integrate the building into the landscape. So I have these little retaining walls. And this is what you would end up having to do in a real life situation where you had a, a building site and you're trying to fit your building into this building site. Hopefully, you're taking advantage of how these things start to come together. And so something like this could be a really nice roof garden or something, um, and we can work work through that. Um, so in reality, I probably need to recreate this a little bit because it's not doing what I want it to do. That. And I'll build this in too. Right, And so that's providing that back support um, for the hillside. Uh, and then this, maybe this becomes another little terrace or something. So you kind of play around with it and, and you work through that uh, sort of thing. So your purpose today is to get your building to sit within the site context, right? And then to start adding the features that make it integral to the landscape. So the terraces, the staircases, the, those kinds of things that are necessary to make it feel like it's part of uh, the landscape rather than just this building that's designed in a vacuum, okay? so. It works kind of in, in twofold, right? You can, of course, have some pieces of it that come in with the block. I find at a certain point, you really need to do the site integration on the, the site file itself, um, which makes it a little bit more complicated because you're going back and forth between two uh, files. Though if you have both files open, right, it's, it's relatively easy to work back and forth between the two. The other option is you can build the geometry, the site geometry in the site file and then take this piece, for example, and I could copy it back into the other file, depending on, on which strategy. So here I am back here. I can go ahead and go to edit and then paste. And of course, it didn't show up, right? There it is. And so let me move it so that it lines up with my building. Right, something like that. And now when I save this and I jump back over to my landscape, right, I don't need those pieces anymore because they'll come in with my updated block. So I can go back to blocks, block manager, right, and I can update. The advantage of having them in the in the block file is that when you're assigning the materials, you can assign them to all the walls at once instead of having to have them in two places. But it really doesn't matter. Okay, So there it is. right? And that's now attached to the block instead. Okay, It's really up to you. So next class, right? we're going to deal with the greater context like putting water in for the ocean, um, putting materials on, getting the site to really work, um, and then s establishing that first quality rendered view uh, with the sky in the background and, and you know really setting it off. Okay? So it's important that you get nicely integrated into your, into your building site uh, today. That means cutting out the terrain, uh, uh, adding any pieces via curve networks of extra skin that you need um, to kind of make this, this feel like it's a part of, 
uh, um, part of the site. Are there any global questions? No? All right. That's it.